Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. Hallmark Charlotte Greenwood Show, brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark Greeting Cards. And here is our star, the lovable lady of stage and screen, Charlotte Greenwood. To the Lakeview Post Dispatch. The time is around 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve. At her desk in the local room, Charlotte is talking long distance to Roger Humphrey, her manager. Hello? Hello, Roger? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I must have the wrong number again. What? Why do I keep calling when I don't want to talk to you? Well, why do you keep answering when I'm not calling you? <laughs> Hello, Roger? Yes, I guess the lines were crossed. What were you saying? Oh, the picture's been postponed until next summer? Well, uh, uh uh-huh. Now you can have a little vacation. No, I said vacation. I'm not suggesting you take up golf. You're too plump for golf. I said you're too plump for golf. F-A-T, plump. (laughs) If you put the ball where you could see it, you couldn't hit it, and if you put it where you could hit it, you couldn't see it. (laughs) Roger, I have to hang up now. Mr. Anderson is buzzing for me. What? Oh, I certainly I haven't been arrested. You've got a letter for me from the police? Well, what does it say? If you haven't opened it, how do you know it's from the police? Oh, it says on the envelope, return in five days to the Lakeview Courthouse. R- Roger, I really have to go now. What should you do with the letter? Well, do what it says. Wait five days and send it back here to the courthouse. Bye. Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. Buzzing for me, Miss Ramson? No, no, it's New Year's Eve, and I was just making some noise. <laughs> Buzzing. Listen, what's the meaning of this drivel you left on my desk? Well, that's the news item you asked me to write. Oh, because I was tied up with that bank robbery story, I told you to do 500 words about the little girl on West Main Street whose cat got caught in a chimney. I wrote 500 words exactly. But what words? What words? Just read it. All right, it says, The little girl went to the chimney and called... <laughs> messenger boys who don't sing. Oh, listen. Just leave me alone, will you? Can't you make a speech without dressing up for it? No, I've lost my notes. Well, I thought you were going to speak, not sing. No, no, no. I lost the ones I had here at the office. I got another set, but they're in the pocket of my dinner jacket. Oh, an idea just came into my mind. No, it's gone away now. Well, it's probably lonely. (laughs) I remember now. I'll go out and get your dinner clothes. You ever had an idea? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, why, y'all. <laughs> After all, I can do that much for a friend. Well, that's well. I'll phone Miller, the manager of the apartment house, and tell him you're coming. Now, Mrs. Anderson, get him Mr. Miller at the Winfield apartment. Yeah, I'll hang on. What time are you going to make your speech? I'll be at 11 o'clock. I come after the fish. Oh, 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 hello, Mr. Miller. Now, this is William Anderson, who just moved into apartment 41B. 
I say, I just moved into apartment 41B on the new tenant. The new tenant! No, I'm not a lieutenant! <laughs> no, you're not young enough to be a lieutenant. <laughs> With your lung power, you'd make a better bugler. I'm a bugler. No, no, I'm not going to play a bugle. I don't know how. I mean, I don't play. Oh, look, I live in the apartment house. Tell him you came away and forgot your clothes. I left the apartment house this morning without my clothes. No, 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 I'm not looking for a barrel. My dinner clothes. I'm sending a friend of mine over to get her. Will you let her into my apartment? Well, thank you very much. Never thought of a dumbbell in my life. I better scribble a note to him, too, just in case. Here, here, hand this to him when you get there. Okay, I'll be back in 15 minutes. You know, Charlotte, in spite of everything, you've got a very admirable body. Well, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, you've got a certain something that, well, it's always ready in an emergency. Always handy and, and, and fixes everything. What do I call it? Uh, I'd call it a safety pin. You know. <laughs> Better take a look at this note. Oh, I better take a look at this note now. That's 14B. That's funny. I thought you were going to be talking on the telephone. But if he's written 14B, that must be it. As the clock strikes 12 tonight, people all over the land will be singing Should Old Acquaintance Be Forgot and Never Brought to Mind. And right then is the time for making one of the finest of New Year's resolutions. To resolve that throughout this new year, your old acquaintances, your good friends, will never be neglected, however far away they may be. That you will keep in touch often with a friendly message, a thoughtful card. At your Hallmark dealers, it's easy to find a card for almost any occasion. How much it will mean on someone's birthday to have your warm birthday wishes. Or when someone is ill, what a lift your cheerful get well card can bring. So too, when you send cards for weddings, anniversaries, or send just a friendship card to say hello, your message will make someone's day far happier. There's always a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So resolve tonight to remember those old acquaintances of yours regularly. Hallmark cards are on display at America's Finest Stores. Don't forget, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. Now Charles Hathaway, his orchestra, and the Hallmark Chorus in I Want to Be Happy. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too. Life's really worth living when we are much giving. Why can't I give some to you? And I'm afraid you say you are blue. I'm afraid I'm falling through. Oh, I want to be happy, but I won't be till you're happy too. Charlotte's on her way to Mr. Anderson's apartment to get his dinner clothes and the manuscript of his speech. But although she doesn't know it, she's headed for trouble. Because Mr. Anderson accidentally gave her the wrong apartment number. So now as Charlotte enters the lobby of the apartment house... Oh, uh, pardon me. Are you Mr. Miller, the manager? Eh? 
Are you the manager of this apartment house? Oh, oh the manager. No, I'm just the elevator boy. <laughs> Did you say boy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I figure running an elevator is better than working all my life on grandfather's farm. Oh, I got sick and tired of that, I did. So I up and run away. How long ago? A week before last. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys will be boys. <laughs> Gosh, are these our children? <laughs> Where about time, Mr. Miller? Eh? I say, where's Mr. Miller? Oh, he went out for dinner. Will he be back after dinner? Well, of course not. That's what he went out after. <laughs> <laughs> Look, boy, I'm in a hurry. I, I want to go up to apartment 14B. Eh? No, B. 14B. I have a note here, see? 14C? No, B. B. Hey! Oh, be quiet. Here, now, read this note. It explains everything. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, the manager told me somebody was coming to pick up something, but uh, <laughs> I didn't expect a slick chick. <laughs> <laughs> a chick? Yeah. <laughs> well, for a yeah. farm boy, you don't know much about poultry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you ain't uh, have to jive talk, kiddo. I tell you now, slick chick means you're the kind of gal the boys look at twice. Yep, I know. They can't believe it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Take me up to 14B, will you, son? Yes, okay, okay. Uh, Toddle in, cutie pie. We'll swing on up. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, when will Mr. Miller come back? Oh, about 20 minutes. Says he wants to take a look at the apartment before you leave. Why? Oh, he's an awful fussy fella. Oh, terrible temper, too. But uh, I know how to get around him when he gets excited. Butterflies. Butterflies? You mean he's jittery? Oh, no, no, no. That's his hobby, collecting butterflies. Red ones, green ones, yellow ones. You talk to him about them and he calms right down. Oh, he sure is crazy about butterflies, that man Miller. <laughs> First name, Moth. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Moth. Moth Miller, that's your good one. That's all right. You're sure to shot me. <laughs> Yes, sure. Well, here we are. Perfect three-point landing. <laughs> uh, come on, I'll, uh, I'll uh, let you in the pass key here. Would you send mm -hmm. Mr. Miller up just as soon as he returns? Yeah, I sure will. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're almost as pretty as a gal I used to know. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah but uh, gals ain't what they used to be 20 years ago. Well, that's right. Some of us are 10 years older. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. Go right in there. Uh, thank you, Junior. Yes, yes. Say, uh, <clears throat> I get off duty pretty soon, sis. How's about you and me going out to celebrate New Year's? You know, Junior, Little Red Riding Hood met a wolf dressed up like Grandma. Yes. But this is the first time I ever met a wolf dressed up like Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> This is a man's apartment. A woman may not have a thing to wear, but at least you have some place to hang it. I'll look in the next room. Uh, what's been going on here? Who's knocked all my stuff on the floor? Oh, hello, operator. This is Harold Conley in 14B. See, somebody's been in my apartment. My stuff is scattered all... Hello, Mr. Miller. I'm glad you finally got here. Uh, operator, uh, well, uh, wait, operator. Never mind. I can handle this. Oh, well, young man, what's the meaning of all this? Well, uh, I'll pick up those things just as soon as I can find those dinner clothes. Oh, you will, huh? Well, there's only one suit of dinner clothes in the apartment, and I've got them all. Well, take them all. The, uh, the what? Now, I know it's New Year's Eve and all that, but just let me have them, and I'm going to tell Mr. Anderson one word. Mr. Anderson? Take off my clothes. Bill, Bill. Have you got anything else to talk about? Yes, I have. Oh, what? Uh, butterflies. <laughs> butterflies? Red butterflies. Green butterflies. Yellow butterflies. Are you completely deceived? I begin to understand. Yes. Butterflies. Now, you stay here. Here, where are you going? Well, don't get excited. I'll be back. Mr. Miller, let me out of here. 
Here it is, time again to say goodbye to the old year and salute the new. The old of the new. Got a song for you, Lord? Well, Wendell, how about combining the old and the new? The old goodbye in a new song. Friends from the newest musical hit, The Seven Lively Arts, Charlotte Greenwood sings Cole Porter's Every Time We Say Goodbye. As we ring out the old and sing in the Remember a day that's important to someone, we send a card because we care. Surely that someone deserves the best of cards, and there's one easy way to be certain that your card is the very finest. Look on the back for the identifying words, a Hallmark card. Like the word, the words, a Hallmark card on the back of the card you send are your assurance of quality. Quality well known to discriminating people for more than 30 years. So when you're looking for cards to say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it, cards to let your friends know you cared enough to send the very best, look on the back for those three words. A Hallmark card. 
And now back to our story. It wasn't Mr. Anderson's room that Charlotte got into, and the gentleman who discovered her there wasn't, as she supposed, Mr. Miller, the manager of the apartment house. So it's no wonder her explanation sounded a little strange. Anyhow, he backed out of the room, locking the door, and now... Hello, hello. Now listen, operator, stop kidding and listen. I am the person who flew into the lobby a few minutes ago in a hurry. Oh, you remember seeing me. Well, I'm up here locked in a man's room. He must be wacky. What do you mean he can't be that wacky? <laughs> hello? Hello? I told you I'd be back. Say, now you look here. What's the idea of locking me in? Now, 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 now. Don't get excited. I just went to get my friend. <laughs> Don't get excited, young lady. Can't say calm. Be calm. He's <laughs> Judge Cronin, who lives across the hall. He's here to help. That's right. I have just what it takes. Yes, well, somebody must have taken it, because you certainly haven't got it. <laughs> <laughs> but, young lady, what are you doing here in somebody else's apartment? That's housebreaking. I could send you to jail. Oh, now, Judge Cronin, I really don't believe she was contemplating a felony. She, well, she's just a little confused. She doesn't quite know what she's doing. Ignorance is no excuse. I know it isn't, but I'll forgive you this time. Yes. Well, okay. Wait a minute. Now, you listen to me. I haven't got time to listen now. I've got to get back to Mr. Anderson. He's in a terrible state. He's lost his feet. What? You mean he's dumb? Yes, but nice. I, I can't understand this. It's perfectly simple. He's going out, and he can't get his feet back until I get back with him. I've got to take his feet back to him. How can you get his feet back? Well, it's in your, the friend of your coat pocket. The pocket of your coat friend. friend. I don't know. Yeah. Wait a minute now. Yeah. 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 Leaving her? That's right. He's early here of late. He used to be behind before, but now he's first at last. Oh, I see what I mean, That's what I was telling you about. Oh, nonsense. How is this woman is simply pretending? Why, she's as sane as I am. My advice is to have her arrested on the burglary job. Oh, how absurd. Mr. Miller here knows who I am. Mr. Miller? Miller's the apartment house manager. My name is Howard Conley. Oh, pardon me. Oh, for goodness sake. Why didn't you say so? That accounts for everything. Mr. Miller knows all about my being here, and Mr. Anderson phoned him. Huh. Howard, see if you can find the manager. We'll into this. Okay, I'll be right back. Yes. Now, young lady, if Miller identifies you, you can go. Why do I need him to identify me? I can identify myself. You can? Who are you? I'm me. Are you certain? Positive. Then in that case, the good one. <laughs> <laughs> You have to be identified by somebody besides yourself. I'm not beside myself. Call Mr. Anderson, Lakeview 0300. He'll explain the whole thing. Anderson. Anderson. Ha-ha! My clever friend. This time you picked yourself up. How can Anderson explain? A moment ago you said he couldn't talk. I didn't say he couldn't talk. And what did you say? I said he was speechless. Oh. 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 No, not allegedly, O three hundred. Let the old again. That's right. Yes, I would do that. What's that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, he lives right here in this apartment house. Oh, thank you. So. Oh, so what? You tried to deceive me again, eh? Well, you've been caught in your own trap. You come with me. <laughs> Bring you here. Whose apartment is this? You'll soon find out. Giving me that story about reaching Anderson at Lakey O three hundred. The problem isn't such a number. Oh, there he is. That's the number. Of well, the... wait a minute. The door isn't locked. <laughs> now we'll see if Anderson can identify you, because he lives right here. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. <What? sighs> Lucky he's fallen asleep in that chair. Oh, the poor man hasn't slept for two nights. He's been out on a bank robbery. What? <laughs> Thank you, Yes, Mr. Anderson, wake up. Get the money, get the money, get the money. <laughs> wake up. Wake up, okay. It's almost time for your speech. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Speech is speech here, thank you. <clears throat> and members of the Civic Club. <laughs> we stand today on the threshold of the Mr. Anderson, I hurry. We do it all month. Mr. Anderson, it's almost 11 o'clock. Yes, yes, come, come. <laughs> 
Well, what's up? What's up? Charlotte, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I said you want a simple errand, and what do you do? You end up with this... This wolf! Wolf! A wolf! I mean, no wolf! <laughs> Sir, I, I am not a wolf. No, to tell the truth, that howl sounds more like a steamboat. <laughs> Maybe he's a wolf in ship's clothing. <laughs> And as for you, Charlotte Greenwood... Well, I did... Uh, Charlotte Greenwood? Char- well, she can't be. Oh, no, impossible. Not Charlotte Greenwood, late of Hollywood. Yes, and late every place else. That's right. I'm, I'm Greenwood from Hollywood. Why, I'm a daysman from amazement. And I'm Anderson from Patterson. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I'm from the post I'm very pleased to meet you. Now, get out! Huh? I have to change my clothes. Oh, Greenwood, I can hardly believe it. I said get out! Why, Charlotte Greenwood... The court has been trying to get in touch with you for days. We've written you in care of your manager, Roger Humphrey, in Hollywood. But we received no response, Mrs. Greenwood. Look, Judge, it isn't Mrs. Greenwood. It's Miss Greenwood. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. <laughs> Whatever I'm guilty of, I didn't do it. But you weren't guilty of anything. You're an heir to the famous Barton estate. Now, listen, for the last time, will you... Barton estate. Boop, 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 Barton estate! Do, do, do. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I am Judge Conan of the probate court. All right, then just put me on probation. No, no, Charlotte, you don't understand. <laughs> You're rich. Judge, how much? How much does she inherit? Well, the estate is still in probate. Uh, but as far as I know now, yeah, yeah. all she has is a three-bottom youngster. Oh! Yeah. Youngsters? You mean I'll have three children? When? As soon as you read over some papers and write your name on them. Oh, you mean to have three children? All I have to do is just read and write? Well, that's it. <laughs> oh, Judge, isn't education wonderful? <laughs> Charlotte Greenwood will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, I want to remind you again, the next time you buy a card for any occasion, look on the back for the identifying words, a Hallmark card. H-A-L-L-M-A-R-K. A Hallmark card. Those three words are your assurance of finest quality. They tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Yes, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And our Charlotte Greenwood. Friends, our army is asking for 10,000 registered nurses. To everyone, the word nurse has always stood for the finest womanly qualities. They say that this is a man's war. Well, it's a woman's war, too. In the Philippines, in North Africa, in Italy, in France, and right now, nurses are serving alongside those very men who themselves are willing to give that last full measure of devotion. If you're a registered nurse, our nation needs your devotion, your tenderness, your thoughtfulness, your compassion. It needs you. And now, until next Sunday, at this very same time, this is Charlotte Greenwood saying, So long, friends, until we meet again. So long, neighbor, till next Sunday, I'll just say, So long, so long. Chorus, you from Wendell, I'll speak English, the Blue Network. 12.30 at KECA, Los Angeles.